I consider this exercise an injection of the live virus of racism. If you've been through this exercise, the next time you see racist behaviors, sexist behaviors, homophobic behaviors, ethnocentric behaviors, ageist behaviors, maybe you will say to yourself, wait a minute, I had that for one morning. I'm never going to allow that to happen in my presence again without responding to it negatively. Over the course of two and a half hours on a Saturday morning, 24 American college students participated in an experience which would change their lives. Why am I here? Um, because it seemed like a good idea at the time. I don't know. I haven't given it that much thought. I don't usually get up this early. I think it's just going to be um, people talking about their political views and how they form them. <laughs> Harassment. That's, that's, what they, that's what they prepped us for. Some people may say some stupid comments that it's going to heat up the room. I really don't know what to expect. I just expect a, a lot of argument about things that we don't necessarily agree on. Take a name tag, put your name on it, and then sign in according to the color of your eyes. You didn't hear what I said. Take a name tag. Go over there. Take a name tag. Pick it up. Put your name on it. Then sign in according to the color of your eyes. You, sit here. Go into that room right there. Stay there until I come for you. Don Brown, sit down. Brown eyed, right around the corner. That room right there. Do you always wear that cap in the building? Yeah. Sit down. Can you be a little nicer, please? What? It's early in the morning, and it's not very nice to be talking to us. You have my sympathy. Now let me tell you something. All you have to do is do exactly what I say, exactly when I tell you to, exactly as I say it. If I tell you to take your cap off, you take your cap off. If I need, no, I do not have to ask you nicely. Now get over that idea right now. You got it? Now, move your leg. In that room. Brown eye, go into this room right around the corner. Nice writing. Brown eye, go into this room right around the corner. where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. On the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was killed, I decided to do an exercise that would help my students to understand racism. I tried to make a difference. I'm still trying to make that difference. Is there anyone in the United States that we do not treat as our brothers? Yeah. Who? Yeah. The, black yeah. the black people. How are black people treated? How are Indians treated? How are people who are of a different color than we are treated? Like they, like they are part of this place. world. They don't get anything in this world. So Why is that? Because they're different colors. I feel people need this because we are still doing now what we were doing in the 50s. Is there anything about you people that is different from one another that we could use to make part of you Okay, we can use the color of your eyes. How many in here have blue eyes? Okay, how many in here have brown eyes? It might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. Would you like to try this? I'm trying to get the people who participate in this exercise 
the opportunity to find out how it feels to be something other than white in this society. All right, people, I'm Jane Elliott. I'm your resident bitch for the day, and make no mistake about that. That's exactly what this is about. I do this in a mean, nasty way because racism, sexism, ageism, homophobia, ethnocentrism are mean and nasty. Today, I am here because I have been asked to do an exercise in discrimination based on eye color. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to give these nice, blue-eyed, white kids the opportunity to spend about an hour and a half to two hours on the receiving end of the treatment which we meet out to people of color on a daily basis in this country. They're in a blue-eyed holding room right now. They are not eating, they are not drinking. There are three chairs in there for 12 people. We're going to bring these people in here. You're going to treat them as though they're inferior because they are inferior. Everybody understand that? They're not going to learn because they can't learn and because we're going to set it up so they can't learn. And if they succeed, who has failed? We. We have. Do you people want to fail? No. If they get power, who loses power? We do. Do you want to lose power? No. For 400 years in this country, we've been basing our judgment of people on the color of their skin. Eye color and skin color are caused by the same chemical, melanin. If you have a lot of melanin in your hair, your skin and your eyes, you have very dark hair, very dark eyes and very dark skin. If you have only a little melanin in your skin and your hair and your eyes, you have light skin, light hair and light eyes. These people all have too little melanin in their eyes. So obviously they aren't as smart as we are. We're going to accuse them of not being as smart as we are. We're going to accuse them as not, of not being as clean as we are. We're going to lower our expectations for them. We're going to force them to live down to our expectations of them. And when they do, we're going to blame their inability to perform on the color of their eyes. Now, in order to get them in their chat into their adult ego state, we're going to try to teach them the listening skills. Now, what do we call men that we want to keep in their childlike boy. state? Boy. boy. We're going to call these males boy. You're not going to use their given name. You're going to call them boy. <laughs> or you're going to call them bluey. Or you're going to call them fool. <laughs> now, people. What do we call women besides chicks? Yeah, yeah. Honey, baby, baby. Uh, gal, doll face, doll, face. <laughs> doll. dumpling. Uh -oh. That's the catering van. Oh, oh. How are you? That means all food's here. It means it's either all here or they packed it up. <laughs> they cannot feed us. We are going to give them no respect. How many of you have friends in that group? Let me put it this way. How many of you used to have friends in that group? Because some of these people are going to leave here very angry because they choose to be angry. And if they say to you, that made me mad and I'm, I'll never forgive you for that, you need to say to them, you had it for two and a half hours one day. One day in your life, you had it for two and a half hours and you're still angry about it. How often? How often have you been discriminated against on the basis of the color of your skin? Number. Number of days? More than once in your lifetime? Oh, yeah. More than two and a half hours in your lifetime? Since the day I was born. Since the day you were born. Has it happened to you recently? This is your but... Let's see, can you do something? Like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> see, see what he said. <laughs> cover, cover up the, just pile the squares. Can you put the chairs back the way they were? Put the chairs back the way they were. White people's number one freedom in the United States of America is the freedom to be totally ignorant about those who are other than white. We don't have to learn about those who are other than white. And our number two freedom is the freedom to deny that we're ignorant. Today, we're going to take away these people's freedom to be ignorant. I want you to understand how the system works. And believe me, this is how the system works. We make laws to support white superiority and to reinforce white superiority and when you catch on to how it works, then we change the laws. I didn't invent this exercise. I learned this from Adolf Hitler. One of the ways they decided who went into the gas chamber was eye color. This exercise is not without precedent. Let's go, people. Okay, let's go. 
Now look at this, watch him. Look at him. Should we just sit anywhere? Should we just sit anywhere? If you came into a room in which the chairs were arranged in this way, and the brown-eyed people were sitting in the, these chairs in this way, and nobody was sitting in the chairs in the middle, where would you sit? In the middle. That would make sense to me. Would it make sense to you? Where are you going? Get in the blue-eyed section. The blue-eyed section is in the middle of the room. Get there. You're a non-brown? As far as I'm concerned, you're a bluey. <laughs> now, is this one giggling? Yeah. What do you know about him? It's because he's ignorant. What else do you know about him? He's in his little kid, little child's ego state, isn't he? Get up here and sit down on the floor. You too, get up here and sit down on the floor. <laughs> I was really tired when I entered the room, but I didn't have any expectations. I was just sitting there and wondering how it could be an emotional experience because I had signed the paper that had warned me about ulcers and stress conditions and things like this. So I was curious and there are a few mumbles about how it was going to go. What are you two going to do? That's right. They're waiting for someone to take care of them. They're in their child ego state. What are you going to do? <laughs> what do you do? What do you say when you walk in front of someone? Excuse me. Try it. Okay. Excuse me. Certainly. Thank you. I don't think anybody really knew what was going to happen. Nobody told us ahead of time. They just told us to show up at a certain time. It didn't take very long before intimidation set in and uh, before my, my buttons were pushed. Now, while I've been talking, some of you have been sitting there reading the signs. I'm not going to put up with that any longer. So you in the back row, stand up and read the first sign on that wall back there. Only brown eyes need apply. Read it so we can hear you. Only brown eyes need apply. Next. Blue eyes Stand up and read the next sign. Oh, watch this one. Watch this one, please. Watch this. Sit down again and then stand up for us. Stand up. That's better. Now, read the next sign. Blue eyes shouldn't hold political office. Next. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? Read it again. Get it right this time. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? Read it again, get it right this time. Pronounce each one of those words correctly as they're written. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? What's the word in front of blue? A. That's the letter A. What word is that? A. Uh, Read it over and get it right. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? Now, practice one more time. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? Next. Louis, don't let oh, the look at this. Did I tell you it was fun to watch blue-eyed people? <laughs> <laughs> Next. I'm not prejudiced. Some of my best friends are blue-eyed. How many of you have ever heard that one before in another form? Oh, yes. Favorite claim of liberals, right? Yes. I'm not prejudiced. Some of my best friends are black. Has any person ever said to you, any good liberal person ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you black? Every day! <laughs> Every damn day! How many of you have had that experience? When I see you, I don't see you black. And what do you say to them when they say that? But I am. But I am. And then what do they say? They say, but I don't see color. I don't see color. <laughs> How many of you think they do see color? Well, people, if they didn't see color, they wouldn't say, when I see you, I don't see you black, because they wouldn't see black, would they? So you immediately know that they're lying, don't you? Yes. Yeah, they're, they are lying. They are saying, I don't see your color. You can't say, I, I don't see color, because then you'd be seeing in black and white. And that would be a really weird world to see. If everything was black and white, we would be some really messed up people. It happens to me on a daily basis in the institution I'm at, and 
there's really no way around it, because whether people do it intentionally or not, what am I supposed to do? You don't have to take that. And I take it you don't take it. Good for you. Good for you, because as long as you say, oh, thank you. And do you know black people who would say, oh, thank you? Yes, how many of you know black people would say, oh, thanks, I'm glad you don't see me black. I'm glad you don't see my color. Your skin is only the largest organ on your body, right? Probably the part of the exercise I didn't, I, I had the most trouble with was when I was forced to realize that I have something that I didn't want to give up, that I'm in a position that other people aren't in. You know, there are other people in my position, but not everybody has that, and that it's not fair for me to protect that. On the day these kids, these white kids are in this exercise, they see themselves as other people see them for the first time in their lives. Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? I'm afraid not. You're afraid not? What about you? Definitely not. Definitely not. What about you? A bit. A bit? Yes. A bit? Yes. Well, tell me what the bit is that you know. Uh, the bit that I know is that you stand up straight, you look at the person who's speaking, and you pay attention to what they're saying. What if you're sitting down? I, I am sitting down. Yes. Then you can't listen, right? No, you can listen by sitting down. Oh, you just said you stand up straight? I said you sit up straight. You did she say you sit up straight or did she say you stand up straight? <laughs> Is this a universal problem with blue-eyed people? You have a paper and pencil with you? No. Do you? Over in my bag, maybe. Over in your bag? Yes. Why is it in your bag? Because that's where I keep it. That's where you keep it. When Why I'm did you put your paper and pencil over there? Because I was not, I did not know when I was going to be needing it. You came to a learning experience, right? Yes. Did you ever go to a learning experience before? Yes. Did you ever take notes? Yes. What did you use? I used a paper and pencil. A paper and pencil. And did you keep it with you so that you could take notes? Yes. Yes. Why didn't you do that this time? Because I was not planning on taking notes. You weren't planning on taking notes? You no. think you can remember everything that's going to be done in here and said in here? Not word for word. Not word for word. So what should you have done? I. Probably, she's gonna say, I probably should have done it. Right. What should you have done? I should have brought my paper and pencil over here and kept it with me That's the entire right. time. That's right, you're acting angry. I am angry. What are you angry about? I'm angry that you're yelling at me. Do you hear me yelling? This is yelling! Have I done that yet? Okay, you're using a stern voice. And are you, angry. are you defining me? No, I am not defining you. Is she you. defining me? Does she say I'm yelling when I'm not? Yes. Perception is everything. Do you feel like I'm yelling at you? Yes. Yes, why? Because you're using a stern voice. A stern, honey, <coughs> it isn't my fault you're stupid. Would you like me now, to go get my paper and pencil? I wouldn't like you in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> okay, then that's fine. Let's, let's get that understood okay. here. This isn't a matter of whether I like you or not. Repeat after me, one hen. One hand. One hen, two, not hand, hen. Hen, hen, lay eight eggs. One hen. One hen. One hen, two ducks. One hen, two ducks. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four hemorrhic oysters. Hemorrhic oysters? I'm sorry. Limerick oysters. Limerick oysters. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five corpulent porpoises. One you can remember everything, honey. No, this I isn't hard for you. Go for it. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five, I forget the other one. Hmm. I'm sorry. So maybe you would have been better off if you could have taken notes for this, right? I do not find the need to take notes for that. I'm going to ask you to remember this for the rest of this time. Next one, six pairs of Darnell Varsity's tweezers. Start with one. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, Five, I do not know. Six, I forget. You're going to have to know this. I'm going to keep testing you on this. <clears throat> what would be a good idea for you to have? Paper and pencil. Paper and pencil. Therein lies the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now, 7,000 Macedonians in full battle array. Start from one. There was no other numbers other than one, two, three, four. Start with one. One. Ten. Two ducks. Three limerick, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five, I still don't remember that number, six, I still don't remember that, and 7,000 whatever you said, I'm sorry. 
Eight brass monkeys from the ancient sacred crypts of Egypt. Start with one. Do you wish you had a paper and pencil? No. Do you think you're going to need one if I keep testing you on that? Yes. Then are you going to wish you had a paper and pencil? Yes. Yes. So in the future, what are you going to do when you go to a learning situation? Bring a paper and pencil. And keep it with? Me. You. Did you learn anything? Yes. Do you appreciate what you just learned? Yes. Did you like the way it was taught? No. No. Any of the rest of you ever taught in that fashion? Yeah. 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 Yes. And did you have to express appreciation for it? Yeah. Yeah. Could you learn something from her example? What are you crying about? I'm sorry. What are you crying about? My feelings were hurt. How were your feelings hurt? Just were. Should I feel sorry for her? I don't expect you to. Should I feel sorry for her? Some of you are thinking, oh, this is too harsh for this young woman. James Byrd, black man in Texas, dragged to death behind a pickup truck by three white males. Matthew Shepard, Matthew Shepard, young man about your little, old, your little younger than you are, had the misfortune to be born gay, beaten, beaten with a pistol about the head until they cracked his skull. And then they hung him on a deer fence and left him there overnight. And somebody coming along on a bicycle the next day saw a bunch of clothing hanging on this deer fence. And they went over and started to take the clothing off the deer fence and found a body in the clothing. Now, I'm sorry, but those things happen because we live in a society in which people are allowed to treat those who are different in an ugly way because of their differentness. I cannot shed tears for a young white female in this exercise who knows that this is an exercise, who knows that it's temporary, who knows that she's getting a college credit, one hour of credit for being here. I'm sorry. I have to save my sympathy and my empathy for those who go through something much worse than this every day of their lives. And when they complain about it, we say, you took it wrong. Or we say, it wasn't racism. You feel real sorry for her? Not really. Not really, why not? Well, because she really didn't, I don't see where she was hurt in any way, I mean. But don't define her, but as far as you're concerned, is this tough? It's it's tough as you make it. Yeah, but could you do this? Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, have you ever been in the situation they're in? Sometimes, yes. Yes. And would crying have gotten you out of it? No. No. And would crying have gotten you sympathy? Not really. And would that have solved the problem? No. No. And would somebody have said, get over it? Yeah. 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 Tears were coming in my eyes. And when I saw these people crying, I'm like, but it wasn't for them. It was for the fact that I know people who are going through that right now while we are sitting in that classroom and had the privilege and the time and the opportunity to be going through an experiment, that there are people outside who go through that 10 times worse than any student of color in that room. You don't know which sign to read, do you? Blue eyes make good secretaries. Isn't that nice? How many of you have heard that one before? Hi. How many of you think she read the right sign? I don't. <laughs> Which sign did you read? The one that says blue eyes make good secretaries. You read that once? She thought we didn't hear you. If I have but one life, let me live it as a brown. Now, we're making progress here, right? When she read that sign. And you lied to me. One. Two, three. Mm -hmm. You read that sign. He and he read this lie. one. You lied to me. I was unsure. How many of you think she sounded unsure? She knew what she was talking about. She knew what she was talking about. How many of you think she's lying now? How many of you think she was finding excuses for making a mistake before? And was willing to say. He read before me the last time, that's the reason I asked. Did he read before her the last time? No. <clears throat> that's why I asked. 
That's why you asked. I was unsure who had gone first. That isn't so what you I said before. Him. That isn't what you said before. You said he read before you. And you said, yeah, I guess it did. Duh. Mm -hmm. Well, he we probably did. Yeah. I may have. Is this a slow group? Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? I believe not. Do you? No. Do you? Yes. Okay, what are they? You're sitting up straight, so you've got one already, right? You should look at the person who's talking and sit up straight or have open body posture. Open body posture is crossed legs? No. It's no, no. Aren't you going to be a good listener then? There, now, this is open body posture. Shouldn't your legs be apart if they're open? <laughs> Why? Not necessarily. Why is it? Hey, I'm here. <laughs> Now, does that make sense, gives, what you just said? A crossed body position gives the effect that you are not open to what someone is saying. But when people's body position... Wait a minute, crossed, wait a minute, stop. I'm going to make a sign and hold it up in front of you that says, stop when you get too wordy, and you just did. Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? Apparently not. Apparently not. Oh, I don't think you do. You certainly don't have an open body posture. Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? No. No. Do you? No, Miss Ellie. But you got a real open body posture, don't you, darling? I guess so. So you can learn, can't you? I'll try. You'll try. You might be one of the good ones, right? Now, when your hand is up, it means you're not thinking about what is being said. You're thinking about what you're going to say. You blue-eyed people think that I look angry. You're the only ones who think I look angry. I don't look angry to these brown-eyed people. Perception is everything. <clears throat> White people look vicious and ugly and non-caring and cruel and arrogant and powerful and condescending and angry. Are you angry? No. Oh, good for you. Are you angry? I'm trying not to. Trying not to be. Now, does that take a lot of energy? Yes. Yes. Are you holding it in? Yes. Yes. And are you trying really, really hard not to react to me? Yes. Yes. And are you trying really hard not to look at me? At the moment, yes. Yes. Why? Because I don't want to make myself more upset. You don't want to make yourself more upset by looking at me? Yes. Right. Does that take a lot of time, a lot of energy? Yes. Yes. Is that hard for you? Yes. Could you develop an ulcer over this? No. You had to do it every day. What would happen to your blood pressure? It would rise. Yeah. If somebody stood over you and you knew it was going to happen every day? Or you expected it to happen every day? Or it happened when you didn't expect it to? Or it happened to your kids every day? After it happened to your mother every day? Now, getting right along, your hand is still up. You still didn't learn anything, did you? Didn't I just say when your hand is up, you are thinking of what you're going to say instead of what's being said? Didn't I just say that? Yes, you did. And did you hear that? Yes, I did. And did you decide that you were just going to do it your way? I was Wait a minute. You were on a roll yes, there for I a minute. Yes, I did. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, I did. Now, since you choose to not listen to others, what do you suppose we're going to do where you're concerned? Not listen to me. Thank you very much. May now, I finish now, I'm no, please? because you're still thinking of what you're going to say instead of what I'm saying. Now, getting right along. I heard what you well, were every, saying. You're doing it again. What you were you're saying. doing it again. I don't care. You're doing it again. It's wrong. You're you doing it again. Persecuted her for standing you're out. You're doing it again. Persecuted him for standing out. The only change that ever happens is when people stand out and I am so bad. Martin Luther King Jr. was shot. Are you in any physical danger here? Are you in any physical danger here? Is that girl in any physical danger here? Emmett Till was hanged by his neck after he was beaten almost to death simply because he said, made a statement to a white woman. Does he have a reason to be angry? Every time I do the exercise, there is a point at, at which I know I have made the point. And we could stop there, but you have to nail it down. And so it goes on longer than some people think it should but you have to nail it down. People at this institution... You've made your point, you're right. Yeah, thank you very much. What is my point that I've made? 
But I, you can't make generalizations about any place because there's racism everywhere. That's right. And while it may be... Uh-uh. <coughs> uh-uh. No. 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 You don't come back in here until you've apologized to every person in this room. Because you just exercised a freedom that none of these people of color have. When these people of color get tired of, ra of racism, they can't just walk out because there's no place in this country where they aren't going to be exposed to racism. They can't even stay in their own homes and not be exposed to racism if they turn on the television. But you, as a white female, when you get tired of being judged and treated unfairly on the basis of your eye color, you can walk out that door. And you know it won't happen out there. You exercise the freedom they don't have. If you're going to be in here, you're going to apologize to every black person in this room. And do it now. I'm and sorry. the Latinos, every there person is of racism color. Racism in this country. Bullshit! No, you're not going to say, I'm sorry, there's racism. You're going to apologize for what you just did. I will not apologize because it Out. is not a matter of Out. race always. Out. 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 <clears throat> now, is she choosing to leave? Yes. 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 She could apologize and stay. I won't play the wrong game anymore. It's not going to hurt us to apologize. Yeah, let's talk about that. What's going on in this room alone? Once she leaves it, that's it. It's over with. OK. They ain't going to hurt her. Is it going to hurt her? She, according to action, it is killing, it's killing her. Yes. Yeah. Killing her. But these people, they felt like it was somewhat traumatic. And I'm thinking, how is this so traumatic when they weren't cursed, nobody was throwing anything at them, they weren't hit. It, they were just getting upset over minor stuff that happens to us, on, that happens to us every day, but they don't realize it. One of our students left because she had the right to make the choice whether to stay or go. Students of color do not have the right to make the choice. Her walking out showed frustration, not only of her as a white person, but of many people of color. And I kind of think that, that, that if somebody didn't walk out, that it really wouldn't articulate what we want to do every day. We all want to walk out. We all want to get away from the problem, but we can't. You think she's learning anything in the hall? Probably not. Probably not. Did she choose then not to learn? Yes. Yes, because the learning situation is not one in which she feels comfortable or in which she feels secure. So what does she do? Leaves. Now, lots of people of color, blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, Asian Americans, drop out. Well, they don't drop out. They get pushed out. We create an unwelcoming environment for those who are other than white and whose lifestyles may be different and whose culture may be different and we make it uncomfortable enough for them that they decide to leave and lose the education or lose the job, which means they lose their living. <coughs> they leave as a result of putting up with it for years and years and years and years and they risk a great deal. She risk anything by leaving? No. The only thing that she's going to miss is the learning. I think the exercise does indeed make them more aware. Things are better than they were when I was 13. They're not as good as they were when I was 50. Now, I want you to take out a clean sheet of paper. Don't tear it out. Just turn over your, turn the page. On the top of the next page on your writing tablet, I want, at the left-hand side, on the top line, I want you to write the words, how they looked. How they looked, on the top line. How they looked. Then, I want you to write three adjectives. Not nouns, not verbs, not adverbs. Adjectives describing how the people in the other group looked to you during this exercise. Everybody put your eye color, brown or non-brown, at the top of that paper. People in the middle put non-brown. People on the outside put brown. Yes? Uh, you don't want to be either. You don't have a choice. You have to be one or the other. Does everybody have to choose? 
Yes, yes, when you go to apply for a job yeah. and it says color or race, where it says race, I put human. Where it says sex, I put yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Read yours. Confused, frustrated, worried. Confused. Any of you confused? What were you confused about? Uh, why all this was <clears throat> going on in this fashion? Why all this was going on in this fashion? Do any of you understand why this was going on in this fashion? Yes. 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 What do you understand about why it was going on in this fashion? It was a chance for everyone here to see what it's like for the people who haven't had to deal with this kind of thing or who haven't at the same magnitude to have to deal with it for just six or seven hours and see what happens to them. Six or seven hours? You've only been in here since 9.30. I don't even know what time it is right now. I yeah. have no concept. That's an important point. He doesn't know what time it is, but it feels like six or seven hours. It definitely hours. does. All right, now, leave three lines under your last adjective. Leave three lines and put the words, how I felt, on the next line. How I felt. And write three <coughs> adjectives that describe how you felt during this exercise. Read yours. Uh, foolish, apprehensive, sad. Foolish, apprehensive, sad. How many of you were sad? Anybody sad? What were you sad about? Uh, that you would teach this in, in the way, in the manner that you chose. That I would teach this in the manner that I chose. Kind of that, like, kind of like uh, fighting fire with fire. Yeah, but that works. Yeah, but I mean, I, I was already, I already knew the lesson. I'm not really playing a game either. So you're, I wasn't intimidated by you because I don't, I don't have, I don't believe that people have power over me, and I don't believe that I have power over them. You sitting on the floor? Yes. You wearing that collar? Yes. Did you drop your head and not grin when I told you to drop your head and not grin? I want a credit. I want to get it that way. Yeah, were you willing to do this to get the credit? Yes. Yes, so can I manipulate you? Yes. You can't, but you can't, you can't change Did my I? soul. You can manipulate Did I? Do my I body. care about your soul? Let me make something perfectly clear here. This is not about your soul. But, but the lesson that you're trying to teach is you're trying to change people's soul. We're talking Wait about- Wait a minute, you're defining me. Well, I, I'm that sorry. That is not the I'm lesson sorry, I- you no, no, me as no, white no, and I'm no. Native American. Okay, you're Native American. Yes. You can pass as white, can't you? Yes, I can. You can pass when you want to, can't you? I can. And you pass when it's good for you, don't you? I, I guess so, I don't do it intentionally. Now, as a Native American, you know a whole lot more about being discriminated against than a whole lot of white folks do, but, you still, because you can pass, probably don't know as much about being discriminated against, actively discriminated against in this country as blacks who are obviously black. You can pass. People won't know you're Native American unless you tell them. Can you pass? At first, I was I was really angry, and I, I, I hoped that I could actually, like, I would take her down. Uh, that was kind of like the, the reaction that I had. I don't know. Can you look at me? Yeah. Do, do, you, do you actively tell people you're Native American? If they ask. If, no, no, if they ask. But how many times, if without, in, in a conversation, have you gone, oh, you know, I'm Native American? I don't, I don't talk about my culture at all. So what do you think people see when they see you? Do they say, oh, he might be, you know, Native American? Well, I mean, I would... Or do they say what? Do they see white? I, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what they see, but I, you know, I can't, I can't ask them to see more than that, but I, I would hope that they would see me. <coughs> when people go through this exercise, I see this happen every time. It's very similar to going through the five stages of grief. First, they deny that what I'm saying about them is true. Then they get angry. You've seen that happen? Then they go into the bargaining stage, then they get depressed, then they accept it and go along with it. I tell people that I want to make a change to become active, to become aware, to educate themselves, and then to act on what they know, but to act, not to stand idly by. The only thing necessary for the perpetuation of evil is for good people to do nothing. I want the people who are exposed to me to be determined to do something. Make no mistake about this, this is not fun. I'll go home tonight and I'll have migraine headache for two days. I'll have two days of migraine headache because doing this exercise is in total opposition to what I believe in. This is absolutely in opposition to everything that I believe and everything I've taught my children. But I happen to think that this exercise can make a difference in people's 
behaviors and in their understanding of other people. Now, that doesn't make me willing to suffer. I'm not willing to suffer, but if you raise that hand, I'm going to break it off and hit you over the head with it. But don't you think I want you to suffer? I think this exercise is important. And I know this exercise worked. I know it worked. I know it worked. I know it could make a difference if you chose to let it make a difference. That's worth having a migraine headache for, make no mistake about that. If I could change one person so that when he or she left here today, they would be different from what they were when they came in, if I could make one white person in this room a different kind of person than I was when I was your age, that would make a migraine headache worth it. What have you learned, honestly? I've learned a lot of things. I've learned that you can uh, compare the stages of loss to the loss of power. And uh, Does that sound logical to you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, did that, is that what happened in here this morning? Yeah, I'd say so. Is that sick? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. Yeah, that's sick. That's sick. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. And if it's sick in this room with this many students, well, they're just out of here on a daily basis. I feel that you're making an assumption that, that, the, that the biggest hurt is through uh, black and white issues. And that might be true. However, I feel that, that there are those who have gone through a lot of pain and prejudice by not being black. It has nothing to do with a race issue, but has, every other, has to do with every other issue. And so it seems like you're, you're assuming that he has hurt more than I have simply because he, his, his issue is more prominent than mine. And do I know what your issue is? No, I, no. Definitely. Do I know what his issue is? Yeah. You're making that, I mean. Do I know what his issue is? She's do I have? You're making the assumption that yes, but yes. you don't know his his day-to-day. -day. Do I know how people, how this society has historically, and today, treats people of color? Yes. Yes. Carrie doesn't want to hear. Carrie wants, I think, that Carrie is determined to see this from her own agenda. And no matter how often you tell her, you have choice. People of color have no choice, Carrie. She can change her clothes, she can change her hair, she can change her ornamentation. People of color can't change their color. I think I have experienced enough of my, my own pain to be able to say that on the inside, how different could we really be? And I felt like when I was in the middle group, all of my previous experiences with judgment and prejudice, etc., were being invalidated. Stand up. You stand up. Stand right here. You stand right here. Now, you folks see any differences here? <laughs> you see any differences here? The yes. perfectly yes. logical oh, question, yes. do you? Yes. What's the first one you notice? What? Sex. Sex. Is sex important to you? Let me put that in. <laughs> You're male? Yes. Yes. Why? I uh, feel so strong, powerful. Your gender is important to you? Yes. Do you want to be seen as a male? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you male? No. no. <laughs> Has anybody ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you black? Yes. Yes. Now, you see, when I asked him, if, has anybody ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you male, you chuckle and laugh. That's funny. But nobody laughed when I said, has anybody said, I don't see you black? Now, she doesn't see your difference. Is your difference important to you? Yes. Yes. But on the other hand... Wait a minute. Is your gender as important to you that you're female? No. It isn't. There's, no. You don't bring anything different to the table than what a male would bring to the table. Yes, historically, and no, yes, not, societally, what, not, not individually. Perspective, your perspective is not different from his? Of course my perspective is different, but I don't think it's because I'm female. I think... In the sense that, I mean, yes and no because of our different physical okay. attributes. Are you as powerful as he is? 
I don't know. Are you as strong as he is? Physically, no. But then is that a difference? Yes, it is. Yes. Does that make a difference in how you have to behave? It depends. Can he go places safely, securely, that you probably can't because of his size, because of his gender? It safely depends. and securely? It depends. Well, it's... I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. It, it depends. You know he can. All right, let me put it this way. How many of you see Rasu as black? <laughs> Did you know you were black before they said so? <laughs> is your color important to you? Very important. And your height is important to you? Yes. And why is your color important to you? It is who I am. It is who you are. It's not that I want to invalidate in any way, shape, or form uh, Rasul's hurt, and I realize that it's entirely different from mine. It shouldn't be that way. However, it is. Gender is a part of me in the same way that color skin is a part of me, so I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to say that it doesn't make me different and that my experiences haven't shaped who I am. But I think what I was trying to say was it doesn't matter in the end if I'm male or female. Is it important for you that she sees you as you are, not as just like everybody else? Yes. Yes. When you say to a person of color, when I see you, I don't see you black, I just see everybody the same. People, think about that. You don't have the right to say to a person, I do not see you as you are. I want to see you as I would be more comfortable seeing you. Uh, I wanted to make it clear to the class that the first thing we do see is black and white. Maybe it's a good thing, maybe it's a bad, but it's something that we have to come to and say and agree and just be open with it like, yes, he's black, I see it. Rasul came away with a knowledge of how the power system works. And that's extremely important. And I think with the knowledge that it isn't his imagination. We live in different realities, but when you deny what this person is going through, or what this person is going through, you're denying their reality. We are different on the outside. Are you and I the same on the inside? Um, we're both loving people, we're good souls, but we're not. No, have you ever been pregnant? No. no. <laughs> So are you and I the same on the inside? No. No, absolutely. Are you and I the same on the inside? Absolutely. Are our psychologies the same? No. The psychology of whites is not the same as the psychology of blacks, or Native Americans, or Latinos, or Asian Americans. Male psychology isn't the same as female psychology. The psychology of the young isn't the same as the psychology of the old. We are as different on the inside as we are on the outside, and we have the right to be so. People don't deny differences. Accept them appreciate them, recognize them, and cherish them. They are extremely important. I think the exercise does indeed make them more aware. And I think it does indeed make them, to have them have, allow them to have more empathy. I know it does. I think it changes the way they think about themselves and their environment. I think it changes the way they perceive others. I think it changes the way they perceive their own power. The exercise is over. You don't have to worry about your eye color anymore. And some of you still don't have to worry about your skin color. But some of the rest of you do. So I can end this exercise. Or you can say, no, it isn't over for me. I will never forget this, and I will make something better happen because of this exercise. You can choose to do that, or not to. You have that choice. The thing is, you have that choice. And you have that choice, and I have that choice, and you have that choice. And people of color have no choice. They have to fight this battle every day. This is what I choose to do. This is what he has no choice about. I think they're going to make a difference here. This is the real world. And when they leave here and go into the so-called real world, I think they're going to carry that decision and that commitment with them. Because once you make a little difference, then that gives you, that encourages you to keep on. I think that I see things completely differently now. I see, I see, I got to experience some of my own strengths and weaknesses. Um, I got to experience some of my sensitivities and at the same time, my ability to, to still stand up even though I felt like curling into a ball. At the end, I felt like I felt very powerful. My roommate has 
said to me, you know, I've seen a different person in you, that you change a little bit, and like that it is my duty to change society, and it is my duty to do what I have to do to make sure that my children don't go through the same shit that I've gone through my whole life. Every experience you have is, is an opportunity to see yourself in a new way. And if you close your mind to that, if you say, I didn't learn anything from this experience, and I say, sucks to be you. When am I gonna quit? When racists quit? Do I have a job for a lifetime? I'm afraid so.